Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer calls out House Republicans trying to kill his UAP Disclosure Act that's supposed to pass in the National Defense Authorization Act. It's already passed in the Senate, but it needs to pass in the House, and there's been a lot of pushback. I got a clip. Let's watch it. Hi, I'm Patrick. This is Vetted. If you haven't already, hit that like button. Leave a comment down below of what you think of Chuck Schumer's comments. Um, and of course, as always, hit that subscribe button. We put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, USA. Let's go, y'all. Finally, on UAEs. While it's not related to China, House Republicans are also attempting to kill another common sense bipartisan... Okay, he said UAEs. All right, he meant UAPs. Just a misspoke, you know, misspoke. He just misspoke, so don't hold them. It happens. Okay, there's a lot of acronyms. Finally, on UAEs. While it's not related to China, House Republicans are also attempting to kill another common sense bipartisan measure passed by the Senate, which, which I was proud to co-sponsor with Senator Rounds as the lead sponsor, to increase transparency around what the government does and does not know about unidentified aerial phenomena. Unidentified aerial phenomena generate intense curiosity for many Americans. And the risk for confusion and misinformation is high if the government isn't willing to be transparent. The measure I championed with Senator Rounds would create a board, just like we did with the JFK assassination records, to work through the declassification of many government records on UAPs. This model's been a terrific success for decades. It should be used again with UAPs, but once again, House Republicans are ready to kill this bipartisan provision. Now we're gonna get the NDAA done this year, just like we have for more than six decades. But there's still some more work to do. So what do y'all think? What do y'all think? One, here's the questions. One, do y'all want the UAP Disclosure Act to pass, right? Or do we want temper chats? Do we want a combination of both? Right. And two, do we think it will pass? Uh, I put a vote out on the vetted YouTube channel, and most people do think it will pass. Not by a lot, but um, yeah. So anyway, all right. I've got some uh, other posts here. Let's go through it. So it's not looking good. To be honest with you, I try to stay up to date on Twitter and it's not looking good. Um, Chris Sharp. Here, let's look Passed at his. Passed by the Senate, which, which I was proud to co-sponsor. Here, let's uh, look at this, this tweet from Christopher Sharp. Right, He writes, the imminent domain language means nothing unless there is some truth to the rumors in private aerospace does possess craft. If the language does not pass, it will be a chilling reminder that this may indeed be real and that private aerospace may be thwarting democratic oversight. So, and then he wrote, I would add that the current picture looks bleak. The language may not pass. Senator Schumer may have fought bravely, but there are some representatives who disdain the very thing they're supposed to do, provide democratic oversight. And then Ross Coltart on top of that writes, you're right, Chris Sharp. I'm told it's all over. The UAP Disclosure Act has been gutted. No imminent domain, no UAP records review board declassification process. Department of Dep Defense has won the battle to gag the public from being informed with the help of key Republicans. So, who's Chris Sharp? He writes for the Liberation Times. Uh, he's an author, and Ross Coltart is also a journalist. Uh, just got hired by News Nation. I mean, just in case you don't know who these people are. Um, so, look, it's not looking good, right? And there is a lot of language in this. It's a long, it's long, right? There's a lot of stuff in there. It gives us everything that we want. Um, and honestly, let's be real. It makes sense that the powers that be would want to stop this from getting out if it's true, right? If it's true, well, of course, they're going to do everything they can. It's the biggest secret of all time. So I don't know, y'all. I don't know how this is looking. It's literally going day by day. That, that is the truth. So I also found this interesting. There's people sending emails to Chuck Schumer and they're getting responses. So I wanted to read this response. So if you send a, a message to Chuck Schumer, this is what he'll respond to you. Um, all right. So it says, Dear Mr. Allen, this is the person who sent it to him. Thank you for contacting me to express your support for the declassification of government materials related to unidentified anomalous phenomena. 
you will be pleased to know that I am also a strong supporter of this cause. For decades, the American public has been fascinated by the mysterious and unsolved in the sky, and I believe they have a right to learn about technologies of unknown origins, non-human intelligence, and unexplainable phenomena. That is why I was proud to introduce and secure the inclusion of Senate Amendment 797, the UAP Disclosure Act of 2023, in S-2226, the National Defense Authorization Act, for fiscal year 2024. This amendment would direct the National Archives and Records Administration to establish the UAP records collection and require all government offices to identify records in their possession that would belong to said collection. Furthermore, the UAP records collection would carry the presumption of immediate disclosure. Don't worry, I got the rest. I asked for the rest. They only put that up and I said, hey, can you can you send the rest of the email? So they did. Um, so where does it, it leads up? Okay. Furthermore, the UAP records collection would carry the presumption of immediate disclosure, which means, which means that if a government office wishes to keep a document classified, a review board would have to provide a specific reason for doing so. If enacted, the UAP disclosure act of 2023 would not only declassify what the government has previously learned about these phenomena, but would also provide a pipeline for future research to be made public. Senate Amendment 797 was included in the manager's package of amendments to the fiscal year 2024 National Defense Authorization Act that passed the Senate on July 27, 2023 by a vote of 94 to 3, y'all. Minutes later, the Senate passed S226 by a vote of 86 to 11. Now that we have passed the Fiscal Year 24 National Defense Authorization Act, I will continue to monitor the progress of Amendment 797 closely throughout the conference process and look forward to working with my congressional colleagues to secure its inclusion in the final bill. Again, thank you for contacting me. Please keep in touch with your thoughts and opinions. Sincerely, Charles E. Schumer, United States Senator. So that's pretty cool. Um, and honestly, this explanation of what the act is in this email is the best I've seen, period, period online. This is the best I've seen of what it is, what it does. So basically what this is saying, this email, it's saying like every government office, if this gets enacted, every government office, right, would look internally at all their files. If anything is related to UAP, right? They have to turn it over to this other office, right? This new office that would get coll uh, a collection office for UAP only. So everything from the government would go to this one place, right? And if different organizations within the government say some of their files, you know what? These are classified. We can't turn these over to the board, right? To this new, um, collections office we can't turn it over to them then a review board will take a look at those files and decide if that's true or not right now it's not that classified we'll take it or you know what it is keep it or whatever so i hadn't heard really that explanation and that's pretty much what it is right so right so it's just a, a basically just at first, just a blanket, give us everything you got from every part of the government. And if they go, whoa, stop, there's some files we can't give you, then that review board will look at those files and decide if that's true or not. And that's it. And that's for future files, future cases, future everything. Sounds pretty simple. That's what we need. Now, granted, there is a lot of nuance to it. Again, it's a long thing. They took a long time to write it. David Grush supposedly had a hand in that. Jay Stratton, a lot of different people who supposedly had a hand in this. Um, so I don't know, kind of interesting, kind of interesting y'all. And look, there's an article here. We're going to take a look at as well. End on this, um, <coughs> excuse me. All right, let me move this here to get a better. Ho ho. So it says powerful members of Congress are dead set on killing UFO transparency. Um, since 2020, no fewer than 10 former government officials, military officers, and scientists, along with a former Senate majority leader, have alleged publicly that the U.S. government has recovered advanced craft of unknown origin, that is, UFOs. 
Nearly all of these individuals also claim that the government transferred multiple craft to defense contractors for scientific and technical analysis. Key members of Congress, drawing on testimony from dozens of whistleblowers, appear to find these extraordinary allegations credible. Again, I'll put a link to this article. It's from The Hill. Bipartisan legislation sponsored by Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer aimed to establish a process with the ostensible goal of revealing the existence of non-human intelligence to the public. But the legislation, which is co-sponsored by three Republican and two Democratic senators, is now in jeopardy. In comments yesterday on the Senate floor, Schumer stated that House Republicans are also attempting to kill another common-sense bipartisan measure passed by the Senate. Which I, was a proud, which I was proud to co-sponsor to increase transparency around what the government does and does not know about unidentified aerial phenomena. So that quotes from the clip that we watched earlier. According to reports, Mike Turner, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee and Representative Mike Rogers from Alabama, chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, are leading efforts to prevent any meaningful version of this provision from being added to the 2024 National Defense Authorization Act. So I think this is important caveat, any meaningful version of this provision. So people are saying that it could potentially pass, but completely gutted, right? Just like what would be the point, essentially? Because it wouldn't have any of the things that we need within it to get what we want, right? So they take away all of its power, right? Just remove a lot of things, gut it, leave it with nothing, just bare bones. Um, members of Congress generally clamor for enhanced government oversight, a core function of the legislative branch and transparency. So what could cause a small group of influential lawmakers to suddenly resist it? Notably, the legislation calls for the U.S. government to reassert control over recovered technologies of unknown origin currently held by defense contractors. Some analysts suspect that corporations potentially holding such exotic technology are exerting undue pressure and influence to oppose the provision in Schumer's legislation. Again, y'all, if this is true, which I do believe it is, right, then again, the biggest secret of all, all time. Of course, there is going to be pushback from the private aerospace companies and who they support within the government, right? That they're paid off. I mean, let's be real, right? Of course, there's going to be pushback. A lot of it. It would make sense that we would try to get a bill like this passed multiple times before it ever actually got passed, right? That is the truth. Probably have to do this for a few years. And that makes sense, to be honest with you. I know people would be absolutely devastated if this didn't go through. But think about it. Again, of course, if it's the biggest secret, the biggest pushback, of course people are going to fight and nail and tooth, tooth and nail, excuse me, to get this not passed. Right? So, anyway. In his only public comments on the legislation to date, Turner denied holding up the measure while adding, I do think it's poorly drafted piece of legislation. Okay, he doesn't say why it's poorly drafted, just a poorly draft. Okay, it's not poorly drafted. A closer analysis of Schumer's 64 page bill tells a starkly different and intriguing story. At its core, the Schumer legislation strongly hints that elements of the U.S. government, in collaboration with defense contractors, have long op operated serendipitous legacy programs to reverse engineer retrieved UFOs. Other secret programs supposedly examine biological evidence of living or n deceased non-inhuman intelligence. So aliens, y'all. The remarkable nature of Schumer's bipartisan le legislation is only trumped by revelations that key members of Congress appear intent on blocking or neutering it for what seems to be no good reason. <laughs> There's a good reason. They're being paid off. And to cover up the biggest secret of all time. As Schumer... As Schumer and his co-sponsors suggest, credible evidence and testimony indicates that government records describing UFO retrieval and reverse engineering programs have been, have been concealed from Congress and the public for decades. The legislation largely mirrors the allegations of De David Grush, a decorated former military officer and intelligence official. The intelligence community's internal watchdog deemed Grush's whistleblower complaint credible and urgent. 
At the same time, an eyebrow-raising report citing multiple sources alleges that a secret CIA unit is overseeing clandestine retrievals of non-human craft. I've made videos on all this stuff, y'all. So check it out. Check out the channel. Check out the videos if you're new and you're watching. Go through the daily videos playlist and you'll see all videos about all this stuff. A core objective of the Schumer legislation is to restore proper oversight over UFO records by elected officials in both the executive and le legislative branches of the f federal government. Right, it's to rein this in and get control of it once and for all. As analysts have noted, there are only two elected officials in the executive branch. So one of the highest ranking U.S. senators is implying that some presidents and vice presidents have not been informed of clandestine efforts to retrieve and reverse engineer, excuse me, technologies of unknown origin, UFOs, or examine biological evidence of non-human intelligence, aliens, y'all. As a remedy to this startling inference, Schumer's legislation mandates sweeping government transparency with subpoena powers. The legislation would establish an independent panel composed of distinguished persons of high national reputation in the fields of national security, foreign affairs, science, economics, sociology, and history to review UFO records too, deemed too sensitive to release immediately. So remember, that is the board that I said that would take a look at files that organizations within the government would say, hey, we can't just hand these over to you. We don't know yet. So this board made up of these people that they're talking about would look at it and deem it if it's they can release it or not. So somebody would get to take a look at it. At a recent academic symposium on unidentified anomalous phenomena, retired U.S. Army Colonel Carl Nell described how this review board might guide the president in methodically revealing the existence of non-human intelligence to the public. Moreover, according to Nell, a core objective of the legislation is averting catastrophic or uncontrolled disclosure. As the Daily Mail put it, catastrophic disclosure is characterized by a chaotic release of earth-shattering revelations which may result in profound geopolitical, social, or economic turmoil. So that just means there's, I've heard different versions of what that means. That means like the NHA, NH, NHI themselves, the aliens themselves, the ET would, you know, expose themselves, bring themselves out in a way that we can't control or other countries, our adversaries, right? So it's like the race to the moon, essentially, the race to, to the atom bomb, right? That, that America, right? Uh, or do we want to be the first ones to come out and say it? In stark contrast to catastrophic disclosure, the Schumer Envision Controlled Disclosure Campaign would facilitate a measured, deliberate process to reveal the apparent existence of non-human intelligent intelligence. Of note, there appears to be some geopolitical urgency to disclosure. High-ranking military and intelligence officials allege that China and Russia may also be attempting to reverse engineer craft of non-human origin. This is echoed in congressional language, warning of the increasing potential for technology surprise from foreign adversaries. Moreover, as former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence Christopher Mellon aptly notes, a strategic methodical disclosure of the existence of non-human intelligence, while potentially destabilizing, could ultimately bear profoundly positive results. Right? What do y'all think? Should they tell us? I mean, we've talked about this a lot on the channel. Right? Can we handle disclosure, y'all? I think the answer is yes. And to be honest, I don't think the answer matters. I think we're owed it no matter the outcome. So if it's catastrophic or not catastrophic, if it completely destabilizes society, it doesn't matter. That's not up for other people to decide for humanity. We got, we, unfortunately, we need to roll the dice, flip a coin. It just, whatever happens, happens, but we need to know. That's humanity. That's the, that's the line of humanity, right? That's our path. Whatever happens, happens, but we deserve to know. And it is what it is. Describing the compounding shocks of climate change, geopolitical rivalries, artificial intelligence, and extreme political polarization, Mellon states that we need a powerful ontological jolt, jolt to promote the collaboration required to manage these common global threats. Take, for example, climate change. If, as congressional legislation implies, the U.S. government or defense contractors possess advanced craft of unknown origin that utilize 
propulsion technology other than chemical propellants, solar power, or electric ion thrust. A controlled disclosure to facilitate broader scientific study of such remarkable technology is long overdue. On what grounds, then, would a handful of influential members of Congress oppose the sweeping transparency outlined in Schumer's extraordinary initiative? So there we go, y'all. What do y'all think? Tell me in the comments. Curious to hear everyone's opinions on this. Uh, again, I'll put links to everything. Let me know what y'all think. Hit that like button again. That really helps out a lot. And hit that subscribe button, y'all. We are growing fast. So thank y'all again for all the new subscribers and fans of the show. Thank y'all very much. I mean that. Grateful for every one of you. So we'll see y'all on the next video tomorrow, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, USA. All right, y'all. I'm Patrick. Remember, every day is a gift. We'll see you on the next video.